let me be easy. Think of me as a cheap exotic as long as I can keep myself with you, Lord Mark, in abeyance. Hmm. Here comes the moose. Chocolate, relentlessly. How unimaginative. Did Lord Mark completely take you up? Of course, it's my vocation. Well, he thinks he did. He got the idea and that's enough for him. Come and drink coffee. Oh, yes, yes. Leave me, leave me. Actually, he mostly wanted to talk about you. You are much more difficult, whereas I am quite simple. Well, tell me about your simplicity, if that's what it is. I've been watching you across the table. You float. <laughs> Do I? I want you to tell me everything about you, from the beginning. So you are the last of a grand broken line. All that is left. You with your wild freedom, your black dress and your vivid hair. Well, I'm a nobody from Bayswater compared to that. My story's very small. But to me, it's like you stepped out of a picture. The wondrous London girl in person. <laughs> I've read about you in novels. I think somehow I dreaded you. Why? No, <laughs> you're much nicer. So what do you want to do with this London of mine? Shop. <laughs> See it. No, I want to feel it. Well, the old is disintegrating and the new springs up with no invitation. Would you show me it? Your London. You know, we could ride the new escalators in Harrods. You get a glass of sherry if you dare to ride it to the top. <laughs> <laughs> is that a tugboat? They pull the barges. The tower looks so pretty. Will you really not look at the new bridge? They say it will be a right and fine symbol of our time when it's done. I hate it. I like the color of it. Like flesh. Close your eyes, we're going under. What I like best about London is the light, the silvery blue strangeness. Is the Thames always such a pun? It's trickier than it looks. So, you must keep your father, your sister, your nieces and nephews, and your aunt happy, while somehow trying to find some kind of happiness yourself. Don't let my aunt keep me prisoner, heroic as I am. But one must admit it is a beautiful cage. We admire you. And the cage is so comfortable, one forgets it is a cage. And is there nobody else? What do you mean? Well, there must be someone. Here's Greenwich. We get off here. Oh, uh, Kate! I envy you your freedom, Millie. Sorry, I didn't mean to pry. No, no, it's... It's this river. It makes me melancholic. It's... Well, it's relentless. Is that a palace? It's spectacular. No, it's a hospital. And I envy you yours, Kate. The color's perfect for you, have it? Really? Of course. Here's the silk, madam. Oh, why always gold or green? Blue. She wants blue. Do I? It's the, the shock of your hair. That's what people can't get beyond. But once you're through that, it's the eyes. Their blueness tells everything. Your eyes are so black, one can't see you at all. Blue it is. Choose a hat. <laughs> no! I see you looking at them. Choose one. No, not that one. That one's mine. <laughs> no. Would you change places with me? Would you change chances? You have it. I can't let go of my mourning yet. Rich as you are, I cannot hate you for it. Well, that must be our last shopping until you promise you will not place the contents of the next shop at my feet. Champagne travel? <laughs> <laughs> what can I give you in return? Oh, mm. Tell me about Lord Mark. Is that all you want? You left me blank. Well, it's imperfect. He's difficult to explain. He has, um, nothing to show, or touch, or prove. It's as if his value is taken as so great, and yet, on what is that based? I suppose his value is in his future. You think he's a humbug? <laughs> <laughs> he might do great things. 
On the other hand, it is something of an achievement to be taken so seriously by Aunt Maud. Aunt Maud believes in him. She may often be fantastic, but she knows a humbug. Has he done anything? He was in the house on a toy fight. Lost his seat at the first opportunity. That's all he has to point to. Perhaps he points to nothing that is a sign of his real cleverness. The one thing the really clever have in common with the really void. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's working Lancaster Gate for all it's worth. Just as no doubt Lancaster Gate is working him. What do you mean? <gasps> Let's get out! W would you stop here? Let's walk in the park. These gardens are my favourite in the whole world. Take my arm. Explain. It's simple, really. Everyone who has something to give makes the sharpest possible bargain for it. One must get at least its value in return, of course. I suppose the strangest thing is this may be a happy understanding. People quite like each other in the midst of it. You mean like Lord Mark and Aunt Maud? I don't know what he's doing for her. I haven't made it out yet. She is an extraordinary woman. Because of who she takes up? Yes. You then? You may ask, what in the world have I got to give? That indeed is what I'm trying to learn. <laughs> she will get it. Trust her. And what about me? Oh, you'll pay a hundred percent right through <laughs> the nose. <laughs> well, I hope something is to be done with me. If the most remarkable woman in England is to do it, so much the better. You know, it's odd she wants us both at the same time. Well, it shows she's sincere. She gives way to her feelings, and feelings have distinctly popped up with the advent of her girlhood friend. Yes, and that mystifies me. Why? That Susie doesn't bore more. Well, she certainly bores me. Oh, you don't know her. <laughs> I see nothing in her, nothing to account for. I don't know why you indulge her. I know why I like her. <laughs> she's nothing to me. You are brutal. Am I? And isn't there a wild beauty to that? A strange grace. Am I really brutal? Well, not brutally brutal, but what's the word? Indifferently brutal. Well, you know I make up my mind. I know what I like. And how quickly you decide. With so many dangers, one has to. Well, it is indeed a remarkable world where there are any precautions against Susie. The porter got me a newspaper. It's quite sordid. I'm enjoying it immensely. You ride in the park? <laughs> we did a couple of circuits. Don't get a chill. Oh, I love this view. Where did you go? We walked in the park. Oh, come in. Oh, put it on the table. No, no, I'll, I'll do it. Thank you. Uh, tea's here, Millie. Thank you. You know, they even bring treats with the tea. We better take it with lemon. We might get carried away. We are carried away. <laughs> there is no doubt of it. Well, in the course of our circuit round the park, it came out our friends at Lancaster Gate are acquainted with that gentleman connected with the English newspaper, you know, who had been with you in New York. Who? What was his name? He came to your house three or four times. Mr. Denture? Uh, uh, that's... A surprise? A chance one in a thousand. Both Maud and Miss Croy know him, I understand, rather well. 